Hello, welcome to this painted demonstration. All I've done for the moment is I've just drawn in three small boats, uh, varying in size, but I've put quite tall masks and a flag on the top. But you can see these boats sit in quite a large background with a large sky area and some water coming forward into the foreground. So we need to add drama into this painting before we put the three boats in. So that's what we're going to paint today and uh, hope you enjoy it and uh, here we go. I just wet the sky here, it is quite wet. Uh, what I want to now start doing is adding some colour into that sky. I'm going to use a very pale burnt sienna first just to put some, some drama and colour on the right hand side. It'll be nice and pale on this side because I do want the boats to stand out against a pale background. What I'm going to do now is take some um, cobalt blue with a touch of Payne's Grey, it's quite strong, and I'm going to introduce some quite big cloud on this left hand side and sweep it down towards this right hand side. And as I come across towards the right it fades because the brush is actually being diluted by the, the paper, the water that's already on the paper. What I'm doing now, I'm going to bring this right down on this side and maybe put some dark in against this this bit of land. And by the way this is going to be a beach with some water in the foreground. I'm going to add some nice warm colours around where the boats sit just to give some nice um, feel around this area and interest in this dramatic sky. I still want some more darks down this side but I'm just letting that settle in for the moment. Um, that's a nice light colour, a nice warm colour. I'm going to add some more dark now. This is the cobalt blue with a touch of Payne's grey and then I'm adding some some burnt sienna in there as well so it's very dark paint now and it's quite wet so it should start to run down the paper. I'm just adding this brown grey to give these lovely clouds into this blue background and I shall leave the blue background on it's quite strong paint but it will dilute and uh, hopefully run down the paper a little bit to give the effect of a stormy cloud arrangement in uh, in the blue area mainly because I want this side to be quite dark to balance with the boats that are going to be put in this side later. I might put some dark on that top right hand side as well just to give a little bit more balance. So I've got a few colours in the sky now. I've got the cobalt blue, I've got the Payne's grey but I've also got some raw sienna and uh, sorry some burnt sienna and burnt umber. Again just adding another colour Sorry, another strength to that. This is Payne's Grey with uh, Cobalt Blue and it's quite strong now, it really is dark, but it gives me another layer of uh, cloud at the top end of the, of the sky which really does add some drama now. It's really got a nice contrast coming now. It's worth spending some time on this sky to get it nice and light in this area around the boats, but nice and dark in the opposite side of the sky. Balances up the light nicely on the right hand side. And then I'm just using a wet brush to spread some of this paint around, lighten up and absorb some of the paint where the boats are. So I've got this lovely light and dark contrast happening now. What I need to do while I've got these colours at the ready is start putting something into this little bit of a jetty, this water that comes in land surrounded by uh, sand coming in from each side. So I'm adding a little, a little bit of that nice warm glow colour in there now. And as I come forward, this colour of course will darken to match the sky. Just lift that up so you can see. I'm now adding the, the dark colours that are used in the sky above into this water, right down to the bottom of the painting. So I've got something similar in colour content that I had or have in the sky and it will just start to start to look a little bit more like water when I put the sand in later. So just a very wet brush now, just sweeping the wet brush in between those colours to give a nice soft transition between each. Here we go, so I've got what looks like a nice patch of water coming forward in the painting and obviously getting wider and wider as it comes towards the front. I need to let that dry now before I go back in and start adding some more detail. Well, that's the painting dry. It's perfectly dry as you can see. Uh, we've got some nice coloured sky in there now. What I do want to do is start painting the, the beach uh, foreground. I'm using a little brown mixed with some 
um, cobalt blue just a nice softer colour in this background area around the back of the boat and the reason I'm putting it around the back is just to make sure that there's something going through so you can see into the distance that's a little bit of blue in there what I want to do now is start adding some more burnt sienna to bring this beach a little bit forward and a little bit lighter I think I'm going to add some yellow and uh, the winds of yellow that are used in the sky I'm going to add a touch into this distance just to to bring this a little bit lighter so it's not so far forward and it's nice and bright where this light area catches the distant sandy shore so that's the the distance part done what I want to do now is start adding some more warmth into that as I come forward and uh, a nice richer thicker colour so there we go and I'm coming down to the water's edge just with the flat of the brush and sometimes I'll leave a little white bit as you can see um, these white marks will later become little rocks on the beach I'm just going to add some dark into that now for the foreground it's quite strong browns this is raw sienna uh, sorry burnt sienna uh, and burnt umber with a touch of the blue just to darken it off a little bit as it comes forward I've nearly done one side I'm just going to bring this little bit quite strong now and quite warm in the foreground more browns in there a little bit into there as well left a nice big white patch there again just to give the impression that this really is now quite large rocks in there as it comes forward I'll bring this down into the water now I'm adding some Payne's grey to the mix to really darken this burnt sienna um, in this foreground and this will be the left hand side almost finished I'm just going to come down again to the water's edge near into the foreground and then I'm just going to take some dark Payne's grey with a touch of burnt sienna and I'm just going to touch along the shoreline and allow that to grow into that sand that just gives the impression of it's wet towards the base of this uh, sand as it comes into the water um, that's the left hand side done now I need to move over to the to the right hand side can you see how this fades into the distance the colour gets some fade just adding some undulations now and allowing that softness in the background okay I need to move over to this other side now right same technique I'm starting with a, a greeny grey and the reason I'm doing that is I want this to go quite far back into the distance again I'm just adding a touch of cobalt blue into that just to grey it off a little bit and I'm going in close to the water again this now balances the other side where this colour looks fairly distant and then like before I'm just going to add some some warm colours now into this to bring this forward you can see this brown this burnt sienna instantly brings this this area on the right hand side further forward and then again down to the the water And you can see the water is winding its way off in towards the boats. Getting wider as it comes down towards this bottom right hand corner. I'm now adding some quite strong um, burnt sienna. It's very strong paint this. It's almost neat. But it will dilute uh, with the water that's already on the paper. So here we go. I'm almost finished. I'm just going to take this off in the corner out into the corner of the painting again just adding some richer colour into this foreground while it's still wet I'm going to bring in some darks again this strong dark colour will bring this foreground quite well forward and then I'm going to add some some Payne's grey to the burnt sienna so I've got a really strong dark now and I'm going to put this strong dark just to give some some undulation again onto this right hand side and then using that same dark Payne's grey I'm going to touch along the water's edge so that this dark colour can spread up just above the water giving a nice dark area very close to the water ok so I've got that nice dark, just put a little bit of dark that far side. I'm just going to 
to take some of that dark on that far side away just to soften and it does sink into the distance nicely. What I want to do now is make it look like there's some reflections in the water. So I've just got a wet brush, it is quite wet, and I'm just going to pull some of this colour down into the water. I'm just using the edge of the brush, sweeping straight down into the water that's there, and it just gives the impression of reflections of this, this land. And I'm going to do the same on the right hand side. So I'm just taking these, just touching the colour with a wet brush and then sweep it down into the water. This is a nice reflection of the land above. Then using a wet brush, I'm just going to take those pieces that I put in and just take them right down to the base of the painting. Just finishes off nicely. And I will need to put a reflection of the boat in when we finally put the boat in. Well, that's the water just about finished. And now I'm taking a brush where I've just took it through a piece, scraped it through a piece of tissue so it's flat and almost dry. And now I'm just going to put some water lines in this water. They just look like wind lines. A couple in the foreground. And it's best to do this in the darker areas because obviously if you do it in the lighter areas you wouldn't see them. And that just re-emphasises the fact that this is water. It just gives a more convincing view. Right, so we've painted the water, we've painted the sand, we've got this undulation happening. What I want to do is create some rocks. I'm going to use a normal palette knife and I'm just going to scrape in these areas on the right hand side. Some quite large rocks in the foreground. And then as I go into the distance, they just get smaller and smaller and lead the eye in towards the boat. I'm going to do the same on this left hand side which is almost dry so you have to be careful it has to be damp. I'm just going to put a few quite large rocks in the foreground and then as I go in the distance I'm just using the tip of the knife just to create some very small rocks as it disappears off into the distance. Now the rocks are in but they aren't quite dark enough in terms of shadow. So what I'm going to do is take some Payne's Grey again with um, some burnt sienna in there and I'm just going to emphasise the shadows under these rocks and that means just touching in, allowing it to run into the wet paint just touching in some dark paint underneath each of these rocks and it will just give the effect, which there would be of course some quite strong shadows from um, the rocks created by that light area of sky in the background. Same on the left hand side few distant rocks that have a little bit of shadow as well but obviously less and then as I come forward it's getting quite strong now and quite deep. So I'm just putting in all these shadows in the foreground. It adds extra interest around these rocks. There we go. What I want to do now is just take a rigger brush with a touch of damp uh, dark paint on there and just put a, through a few break lines, a few cracks in these rocks. It just adds extra interest to this foreground. So I'm just running the, the rigger brush through the damp paint and into the rock and that will instantly create uh, cracks in those foreground rocks. Just gives a, a little bit more for the viewer to look at, some more interest. Okay, we're just about there with the foreground. Just put a nice big crack down this rock in the corner. Okay, um, we're just about there with the, the sand. I need to let that dry and then we'll take the, the masking fluid off of the boats. Okay, we're nice and dry now and I've taken the, the masking fluid off of the boats. What I want to do now is actually paint the boats. I'm going to paint the middle boat in a, a burgundy colour um, just to give a nice warm feature to look at. So this is a nice burgundy colour. I'm going to drop that in first of all along the top edge and then down the other side. I'm going to keep this nice and neat. Try and leave a little white line at the front of the boat just to give the impression. I'm going to change to blue actually on the base of the boat. I quite like the idea of painting that a dark blue. So I'm going to change that to a dark blue 
and then sweep along the bottom of the boat. I will put some shadow in later just to give this a three dimensional effect. But what I'm doing for now is just taking this colour and leave a white line down the middle of the boat. Something like that. So that's the first boat uh, painted. I'm just going to deepen this red, take it down a little bit further. Now on the top of the boat there's a small cabin. Um, I don't need to paint the cabin as such but I do need to paint the windows which will obviously give the impression that there's a cabin there. So there's a window each side and then just going down the edge a very thin window. And that's the boat almost finished. The middle distance boat, there's very little on it. Um, the focus really is on this main boat. So again I'm going to put two small windows in there and just using a pale blue colour um, for this middle distance boat. I don't want a lot of colour in there. I don't want a lot of shade or detail in there. But I'm going to leave a little white line down the front of the boat. So that's that boat painted. In the distance I've decided to just take that boat out altogether apart from the mast which I'll put in later. So we're just about there. Um, the mast for the boat, I'm not going to paint a straight line using the rigger brush. I'm just going to take a long, uh, a wide brush, a flat brush, make it almost to a point with a nice bit of dark paint. So I've now got a flat brush which I've put to a point and I'm just going to touch in the, um, the masts. So very gently touch, touch, touch. The next one just touch, obviously it's shorter and the final one is just one dab. What I want to do, I've just put that in very roughly because I'm going to put some sort of um, a sail around that using a burgundy colour and I'm just going to touch at the top, very slight there's hardly any colour on this brush now. I'm just going to use that black that's already on there, the paint's grey. I'm just going to sweep this sail around the mast. And then using water and a tiny touch of real bright red, I'm just going to touch into that damp paint. and It gives a nice bright red. And then I'm just going to take water and spread that paint around a little. There we go. That boat's almost finished. Um, the distant, the middle distance boat, I'm adding a little bit more blue to that red, but still putting a little bit of a sail in and around that mast. So it's clearly not just a mast, there is a sail there. And the distance boat I'm not going to bother with, I'm just going to leave that dark line. What I want to do now is add the flag at the top. Now the flag at the top needs to be quite a bright colour. I'm going to use a bright yellow for the flag. And it's just a strong Windsor yellow and I'm just going to put the stripe down the flag. So it's a white and yellow flag. The distant one I'm going to do in uh, a blue colour. And it's quite pale because I do want it to, to stand out. So there's a blue flag on the one behind and then just a dark colour, just a spot. Because it's too far away really to see um, any more than just a spot. Right, now using a detailer brush, the boat's dry, I just want to add a few little bits of detail that might be something sat on the top of the boat. Certainly see a little bit of a ridge underneath the roof, but you probably have a rail as well uh, around the front of the boat, just a, a safety rail, which I'll put in as well. Okay, that's just added a little bit of detail. I'm going to put some, some shadow down this right hand side of this uh, front piece, so we've got some depth as well. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow underneath the red down the left and right hand side. Okay, I'm just going to add um, some shadow underneath the boat to this right hand side. So I'm darking off right along the bottom of the boat just to give it extra dimension. And darken off this right hand side. There's a little bit of shadow I've just added the right hand side of the boat which just gives us a nice three-dimensional effect. That's the large boat finished. Um, I'm just going to add 
a little bit of detail into the middle distance boat. I'm just going to put some dark under the rim of the sides of the boat. Maybe a little window in there actually. The roof, the roof would be casting a small amount of dark, which I'll put on and in there. And then what I'll do is I'll run some dark down the right hand side of this distant boat as well. You can't see a lot of it, but there'll be things uh, sort of fixed to the roof. So there's not a lot of detail there. And this distant boat has got nothing other than a, a mast. I'm going to use uh, a red to uh, highlight the flag a little bit more. It's not, uh, it's not prominent enough for me in the painting. So what I'm doing is I'm using a strong Windsor red mix and I'm just going to put a red line underneath the yellow and above the yellow. And that emphasises the flag a little more, which I quite like. I'm also going to put a little bit of red in the middle distance boat. OK, we're just about finished. I want to put a couple of birds in the picture on this side just to fill the gap in the sky. So I'm going to put quite a couple, quite large bird in the foreground and then a couple of smaller ones in the distance. I shall add some white to that later just to make them look like seagulls. What I'm also going to do is using the large flat brush again and I'm just going to touch very lightly on the painting with a nice straight edge on the brush and I'm just going to touch a small mast sticking over the top of uh, where should it be there? Maybe there's a couple of boats behind the headland there. There we go. So we just, well, as you can see, the boat looks reasonable. The quite large boat in there, but it hasn't got any shadow at the moment. And I really could do with putting some shadow in there, or reflection at least, um, underneath the boat because it looks like it's actually sitting on air. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a wet brush now and just dampen the paper in the water area and maybe run the mast down somewhere down there. So I've got some water now on the paper that will allow me to paint in um, some paint and it will spread because it's damp and um, it will soften which hopefully should give me a nice a nice reflection effect. So I'm using quite a dark paint now beneath the boat and I'm just going to run some dark paint in the water a touch of red because the red would be reflected of course as well. So there's the reflection of the boat well there we go, uh, that's the painting finished as you can see on the bottom right and left hand side where we added the rocks using the scraper uh, uh, palette knife and then also put in some cracks in those rocks using the rigger bush, brush. The three boats quite distant, quite far apart, uh, the foreground ones in most detail and most colour uh, and the flag of course at the top. One important thing is the way we put the sky in, it's very dramatic and it is nice and soft and does give the effect of distance clouds. There's the three seagulls that I added. I just added a touch of white underneath the wings to make them look more like seagulls. And I also put three boats on the left hand side right in the background. You can just see the masks poking out. There's the left hand side rocks and the water effect as you can see dragging down the shadows but also putting in those wind lines to give a nice more realistic effect. Well that's the painting finish. I hope you enjoyed this quick demonstration and uh, hope you're able to come back soon. Bye for now.